This time on episode 396 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to discuss some weekly Marvel news items, including the Ant-Man Quantumania casting news, some casting news of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, and rumors surrounding Howard the Duck. I'm SP from Better Podcasting, a show dedicated to help make your podcast better, and it is part of the Get a Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other insightful and wonderful geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your Schedule D briefing. I'm Consultant Chris. And I'm producer of the show, Director SP. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. This show is recorded on Thursday, October 14th, 2021, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast Marvel News room wide via www.geeks.live come join our live chat as we record legends of shield is a fan-based podcast we're fans on the marvel cinematic and comic book universes chris sp so good to have you back today i'm excited to be here you know why why because it's thursday and that means tomorrow's friday i've heard it termed as friday junior i believe you told me that that is true. Yeah, and I use the term Friday Eve because like Christmas Eve, Friday Eve, it's really good. I like it. So yeah, either one, switch them out or just Thursday night. Yeah, that's fine. And Thursday night means Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is recording and we're having a ton of fun. This is the first time since we started Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. that we don't have any new Marvel screen material to cover. Can you believe that, Chris? I really can't. There's so much going on with Marvel. And just the fact that there is nothing new that an adult can handle watching without wanting to just run away. <laughs> I'm laughing because there is new Marvel content out there, but it's not necessarily would it keep the adult's attention, I guess. That's the best way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. So. We're kind of dancing around it. It's Spidey and his amazing friends. If you have a small child, watch it. If you don't, don't bother. <laughs> so we won't be covering that here on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., but we did try it. We did dip our toe in it. We did test it out. And we're like, no, we just can't do this. But aside from that, there is nothing new out there on Marvel to cover. We've gone through the Defenders Netflix stuff. We've covered all the Disney Plus stuff. We covered all the stuff that was on Hulu, that was on ABC. We've covered it all here on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., not to mention the MCU films themselves. So I know there's things, there's extras here and there that we could possibly cover. But as far as new shows, it's done until Hawkeye comes out here in November. And I don't know about you, Chris. I'm really looking forward to Hawkeye. It really looks like a fun little miniseries. Just the fact that we're finally going to have something that's Marvel Christmassy like that. I think it's a good enough reason to be really looking forward to it enough. But I just have so many friends that are big fans of Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. So either way, from either angle there, I've got everybody telling me I should watch this. And that many people can't be wrong. I'm more of a fan of Kate Bishop than I am with Hawkeye, just because of everything I've heard so far. But we'll see. It just looks like a fun series to watch. It doesn't really matter the characters. And as long as it's set in the MCU, I know I can make connections in there and everything. So that's going to be good. That is coming out as far as we know, anyway, November 24th, which is the day before Thanksgiving in the United States of America. We will be covering the premiere at some point. We just don't know exactly when, if it's possibly going to be Thanksgiving Eve, we just don't know when we're going to be covering it, but it'll probably be sometime that weekend. And then in the meantime, we do know that we haven't covered Shang-Chi yet. And the reason is it's not on in Disney Plus yet. And Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not going to be responsible to make any of the agents, any of us, any of the co-hosts of this podcast, 
go out into the theater and watch it. So we're just going to wait until it comes out on Disney Plus. Same with Eternals. And because of the length uh, between the premiere of Shang-Chi and when it's coming out on Disney Plus, I would venture to say it's going to be about two and a half months before we see Eternals. Might be before that. I don't know. But we are going to cover them, but it, we're going to wait until it comes out on Disney Plus. Does that sound fair to you, Chris? That seems right. I mean, we all have our reasons for wanting or not wanting to go to the theater. And I know for me, my theater is kind of tough to get into anyway. So hmm. having this many people all of a sudden want to go to a theater, I mean, that's going to have my normal Sunday matinee spot filled up. I just don't like super crowded theaters anyway. I don't either. I'm going to enjoy seeing it at home. Kind of thinking this is an excuse for me to see it at home versus in the theater. But regardless, we're just going to do it that way. It's going to be the way it is. Other than that, we're going to come back with you with news at least every week. Probably a special topic here and there. Probably more often than not as we go on. I've already got a couple in my mind that we're going to actually tackle i don't know when which dates that there will be but definitely we will be doing the newscast the exception though is going to be next week my older daughter is getting married on saturday and chris guess when the rehearsal and the rehearsal dinner is uh traditionally i would say friday traditionally it is but unfortunately the venue is not available on friday so when do you think it is with the venue not available on friday um Wednesday. No, not Wednesday. I see you're dancing around the issue. It's going to be Thursday night, so there's no way I can be here for the podcast anyway. Your daughter won't let you miss the rehearsal dinner to record your podcast? No, no, I I wouldn't want to miss it. Dude, the amount of money I'm laying out for this, I'm not going to miss it. So I am not going to be here, and I don't want to edit, so we are not going to have a podcast next week, but we'll be coming back the following week with some sort of content for you. It might be a news only cast, but it might be looking at all of the future Marvel projects that are coming up and everything that we know about them. And actually, we might end up splitting that up. I don't know how, maybe per year. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that. There is, a, I'm looking at this list right now. It's in the show notes, and there's just a ton of information to cover. So we might actually be breaking that up. But in the meantime, we are going to be talking weekly Marvel news. It is important for the MCU as it goes forward for us to understand this. So we are going to come and talk about Marvel news. And with that, Chris, are you ready to get on with the first news story? Let's do it because it's been a newsy little time period. It is a lot of rumors, but we'll quantify them and and we'll go through that. So the first one I will start off with is a little news story that I ran into on the CosmicCircus.com. And it is a kind of a casting rumor based on somebody that is normally used as a stand-in for another actor. Well, here's what the article said anyway. Thanks to a brand new casting listing on Mandy.com, we see that John Townsend has been cast as a photo double on the production of Dust Bunny. Now, Dust Bunny is the production name for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. What's interesting is the actor's name that he is posing As a photo double for, his casting indicates that Mr. Townsend is acting as a photo double on that production for the iconic 80s actor, Bill Murray. Murray's role at this time, however, is currently undisclosed. What's interesting about this is that Peyton Reed is actually a fan of Murray's based on this tweet from earlier this year. Chris, I think now Bill's older. He's not the Bill Murray of his prime. He's an older Bill Murray, but I would love to see Bill Murray as a comedic actor in the MCU. And the best place to put him in would be the Ant-Man series. What do you think? Well, you've already kind of set the stage for being able to de-age people when they did that to Michael Douglas. So having that done to Bill Murray is already on the table. But also, Bill Murray makes regular appearances around Charleston, where I live. Oh, I'm looking forward to running into him after this. That'd be kind of fun. I know he likes to party it up or, you know, ham it up and that sort of thing. You know, he's a typical actor, likes the attention. So, yeah. Oh, good luck. Is he from? I don't even know where he lives. Does he live in L.A.? I don't know. I have no idea. I just know he's here a lot. He at least used to own part of the minor league team we have here. Oh. 
And he bought my sister shots one day. <laughs> what kind of shots do you know? I don't remember. This was like four or five years ago. Okay. Well, that must have been a good time. I, you know, when I think of shots and Bill Murray, for whatever reason, it goes back to the Groundhog Day where, when they're in the bar afterwards, you know, at night. You know, you've seen Groundhog Day, right? It's been a really long time, but yes, I have finally seen something. Okay. So Groundhog Day, every night they end up at this bar at the hotel, right? And he's trying to order drinks for her or whatever, you know, his love interest, Andy McDowell, and trying to get that whole thing going. So when I think of Bill Murray and drinks, that's what I think of. Now, unless you've seen something else that Bill Murray's been in that he's been drinking in, what do you think? No, I think that is pretty much the iconic Bill Murray drinking things moment. All right. Well, listener, if you have an iconic Bill Murray on screen drinking moment or a nice story that you ran into him at the bar, please get a hold of us and we will run it on the show. All right, Chris, you want to take this next one? This next one is really exciting for me. So Armor Wars is going to be exploring War Machine's past and future. Yeah. Don Cheadle came out and he said he was talking about what the series was going to be about. It's like, okay, Armor Wars is probably going to be like Stark Tech and everything like that. But what is the essence of it? Now, we already had John Cheadle come out in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He had some cameos in there. As a matter of fact, he got a, an Oscar nomination, didn't win, but he got an Oscar nomination for Best Guest Star in a Series or something like that. Now, he is talking about not only what is happening now that Tony is gone, but also what is going on with Rhodey as a person? Because we've only seen Rhodey around in the MCU in relation to the Avengers, more specifically in relation to Tony Stark. He's out on his own now. So what was Rhodey like before Tony? What is Rhodey like after Tony all by himself? Because he is on his own right now. And I think we've had hints of his relationship with Carol Danvers on screen, like little smirks or something like that when they're talking back and forth, but we haven't had any confirmation in the comics. Of course, they do have a relationship. doesn't mean they have a relationship now, but I would like to see something like that as we go forward to set him up as his own main character. Cause let's face it. He, there's no Tony Stark out right now. Plus you've got the two air force characters that can go do things. You know, I, I just like people who fly planes. I'm sorry. I'm, I was a small child once and like planes, but I'm going to really like to see how he grew into the character that was coming on and helping out Tony. I'm going to like to see how he goes after because obviously, you know, the Tony experience changed his life forever. Well, obviously it did. And not only that, but the accident changed him forever too, because I don't think he's had nerve regrowing. I think he's still dealing with the technical prosthesis right now, isn't he? Uh, if I remember right, he is. Yeah, so maybe that will get fixed by some magic or something. I don't know. Maybe Wano will come in and do something for him. Anyway, that's what the Armor Wars are. If we look back into our little list of everything, I've got this slated sometime in the middle of 2022, but honestly, if it's just in development right now, I think we're talking later 2022 at the earliest. And then we were going to talk about this and sprinkle it in. I think it's as good as time as any to talk about it. There's a projected strike for crew members on board TV series right now. When this episode comes out, it might have already been resolved. If not, there might be a strike and it might impact the ability to film things. Now, Chris, I don't think that this upcoming strike is going to be as devastating as the writer strike is, at least to the story creation, because you still have the writers, you still have the producers still able to do their jobs. So they're still putting in the story behind things, but you're not going to be able to film anything and definitely not in Disney. If they use that big green screen thing that they built for the Mandalorian, there's no way that they can use that without crew. Yeah, like when you had the writer's strike going on, that was ending pretty much everything because the writing is the foundation of the entire show just by nature of having to come first. But, I mean, it, it sounds kind of callous saying it like this, but you can write the entire series and just know that it's sitting in there in your pocket for when everything gets worked out with the crew. 
and I hate to say it like that too. Also, I will will say that I think it will impact everything because in this day and age where you already are set far behind because of COVID and the lack of being able to film stuff for a while, I think this is going to hurt even more. So not to say that this will have no impact whatsoever because people do want new content, but I don't think it will be as devastating to the stories. I don't think it will kill this series. Like, to be honest, the writer strike killed, flat out killed series before. Like you were telling me before about one. Heroes, Pushing Daisies, those are the two that really spring to my mind because those were two that I was watching when it happened. And all of a sudden, you have these shows that are just, okay, we have to stop. And Heroes had its following, and then, you know, famously, it came back kind of horrible. Pushing Daisies was more of a cult show, but it was picking up steam as it was going. You get your kind of cliffhanger of an ending of the last episode, and then all of a sudden, they can't come back for anything. Because the writer strike just killed all the momentum that the show had. The biggest one that I was watching at the time, and I'm not so sure the writer strike had a huge impact on. I think it did, but it was Battlestar Galactica. It was near the end of the series, and I think they could have ended that better had there not been a writer strike. Aside from that, I did watch Heroes. It was the biggest mistake in my life. Years ago on the Gonna Geek show, I lamented that I rode that into the ground and I would never, based on heroes in a bunch of different series, I vowed I would never ride a series into the ground. And actually, that is the genesis of my, if it's going to air on TV, I need three good seasons before I start to watch it because I'm not going to get stuck in like one season and a cliffhanger and then it's canceled or two seasons and then it doesn't get renewed for a a third season or something like that for whatever reason like price of the actors or whatever i was just getting sick of it i'll say even though i started that role just a couple of years ago i think it's antiquated now because of the streaming shows and streaming shows provide shows a little bit more security because it's more of the pbs model npr model the bbc model where they have a stream of money coming in and then the creative executives can decide what they're going to use that money for. And if they decide to make a tentpole show out of something, they can go ahead and dump money into it and and make it until they just can't make it anymore. And they say, okay, we're done. Unlike like sci-fi with expanse, like saying, okay, we can't throw any more money into this because we can't earn any money on it because we don't own the rights to it. So we're just going to set it free. And then Jeff Bezos was like, Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, we're going to pick that up and we're going to keep it going, which doesn't happen all the time. Alphas. Remember Alphas on sci-fi? Did you ever watch that? I'd heard people talking about it, but by that time, I had pretty much given up on any sci-fi shows. Yes. I will never watch anything on the sci-fi network. Matter of fact, NBC had uh, this the premiere a couple of weeks ago of La Brea. Is that how you say it? La Brea? Mm, sure. Why okay. not? La Brea. And I new looking at it from the promos that i saw i'm like okay this is just this stereotypical nbc it's going to turn out just like revolutions might be a phenomenal pilot but it's going to go downhill dramatically from there Mm -hmm. i'm like no i i just i don't want to spend any time on it at all so i i didn't get to know it i didn't allow myself to be disappointed basically on the converse side there's been a lot of shows coming up on streaming One of the shows that I was watching recently is Why the Last Man. I don't know if I'm going to continue watching that because I see it falling into the same trap as like Designated Survivor and Walking Dead. And I don't know which way it's going to go, but it looks like it's going to go down one of those paths. And I didn't feel comfortable with those paths. So, but I did give it a try versus not like with NBC. Anyway. All this to say, writer strike, or not the writer strike, crew strike is possible, and it might impact some things just like it might impact Armored Wars. Okay, Chris, you have a special news story to bring us right now. I do. Back in 2019, Marvel said they were going to make a Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur show. And then all of a sudden, it's two years later, we still don't have a Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur show. But sometime in 2022, that's going to change. 
because we're going to have a moon girl and devil dinosaur show i mean really that's the only way that can change <sighs> but you know what the cast list for this oh my goodness this is ridiculous I didn't see this anywhere, and then I saw this pop up on our show notes. I was like, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, so you've got Palfrey Woodard. Wow. Who was in Luke Cage. I mean, any of these people are going to hook me right by themselves. Alfrey Woodard, Woodard was also in the MCU. She was in Iron Man 3. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, a different character, but she was in it. Well, st- oh, man. You just made this even better. Was it Iron Man three or was it? It was it um, Civil War. I think it was Civil War. One of those two. The movies run together in my head right now. It was Civil War because he was talking about the Hollow Room with his parents, and that came up that Bucky killed his parents. So it was yeah, Civil War. Yeah. I'm sorry for every name that I'm about to butcher here. Better than me. You have Libe Barr who is going to be the main character's friend and manager, Casey. Oh, yeah. Alfred Woodard is also going to be the main character's grandma. Should have said that. You have Sashir Zamata, who is going to be the main character's mom. You have Jermaine Fowler, who is going to be the main character's dad. You have Mr. Hulk himself. Fred Tadeskior, who's going to be Devil Dinosaur. So, Fred Tadeskior, by the way, is the voice actor that we talked about in the What If series that has over 800 voice credits to his name. You have Gary Anthony Williams, who's going to be the main character's grandfather. But who's being the main character? Yeah, who is it? Yeah, You have Diamond White. Who's nice. going to be Lunella Lafayette, also known as Moon Girl. Because her head is always up in space, thinking about other things besides what is going on around her. Because she is a smart little girl, really into science, a really could be a really good role model for younger people here. But also she gets to hang out with a dinosaur. But okay, so my most my most favorite part about this, right? I got to say, it is me too, looking at the show notes. Not only do we have the Beyonder, which means potentially somebody is going to have to teach him that you have to use the bathroom after you eat. That is canon in Marvel. You have Lawrence Fishburne playing the Beyonder. Nice. That's going to be so cool. Lawrence Fishburne of the... Uh, he's a noted actor of itself, but everybody that I know remembers him from the Matrix. That's the first thing that pops in my head, too. Like, I know there's other things, but he's Morpheus. So, I gotta ask you this, though. Have you seen anything about the animation style for this series yet? I haven't yet. There are some still pictures with the article that Marvel has put out. I don't know if those are pulled from comics or if those were made specifically for this or if they're made for the show and then they also pulled them for the article i mean you've got i don't want to say you've got plenty of time but you know it definitely could have been something where you know they pulled a specifically done scene or something just for the article yeah so ac bradley said that they the marvel studios didn't have an animation shop and they basically set one up for the what if series they said not necessarily is the style going forward, but they now have their own animation shop so they don't have to depend on Lucasfilm, you know, Sound and Light, or any of the other branches of Disney to do their animation. They have their own capability inside. Basically, I heard her in an interview say they were given a floor of a building and said, you fit it out, whatever you need. Here you go. Here's your animation shop. And to me, walking into... Like a, a floor that's basically an open bay. I've done it before for, for different things, so it's not really daunting to me, but I can see how somebody who has never done that before, and I don't think AC Bradley has ever done that before, it would have been like, oh crap, what do I do? Where do we get the stuff? You know, what stuff do we need? All that sort of stuff. But be that as it may, I'm really hoping that this can be an animation style 
that can hook the whole family in, you know, like Clone Wars. Let's take that as an example. I don't know. Have you ever seen the Clone Wars or not? Uh, I keep meaning to start it. So I've watched like a few episodes here and there, but I'm familiar enough with the animation style. Yeah, I think that animation style can can transcend ages. But if you go too much like Spidey and his amazing friends, you're just going to immediately turn off a lot of people. And I don't know, maybe that's what they want to do, but I don't think that they want to do that with the series. I don't know. We'll see. If it's like the pictures are in the article that I found from Marvel, then they're going to have that covered pretty well. It's kind of... I don't want to compare it to like Futurama and Enchanted and stuff, but it is that definite art style of it doesn't scream any age group with it. Okay. Well, moving on here, we have a rumor again. There's been a lot of rumors right now. I don't know why. I, I think we are in a little lull between now and the big D plus day on November 12th. So they're kind of sprinkling some stuff in there without really confirming it a lot because they want the big announcements to be on Disney plus day. Anyway, there's a rumor that there is going to be a Shang-Chi spinoff series. Now, I haven't seen the movie. You haven't seen the movie. So it's like pointless for us to pontificate about what exactly the content of this is. However, I think as we were discussing previously, I think before we started the podcast, I think it's a safe bet now that they have this avenue of Disney Plus that they will fill out some of the backstory and the side story of these without having to show stuff on screen because it's all technically the MCU. I think there's good stuff on that and bad stuff on that. Now the good stuff on that is that we get more amazing, good content. And when we fill out broader storylines, like we had WandaVision, we had Loki, those will all coalesce into Dr. Strange, and the multiverse of madness. I want to say multitude of madness, but multiverse of madness, right? But you're just going to have more filler that actually means something. You're going to have characters pop in and out like we did with uh, the Falcon, the Winter Soldier with a character that was that we it was kind of spoiled, but it was at the post credit scene after at Black Widow. So you're going to have that sort of stuff and you're going to get to know new characters or side characters better. I think this is a good thing. For Shang-Chi, not seeing the movie, I don't know how much story it needs to have filled out, but then again, I don't know what they want to do with the characters as the MCU moves into the future. So what do you think about the Shang-Chi rumored spinoff series? I think this is a great way to be able to explore other characters that had a good fan reaction, but didn't have as much of an appearance that the fans wanted them to have and being a TV show, if it's filmed the way the TV shows normally are filmed, then you don't have it filmed all up front. You're kind of going as you go along, you might be a few episodes ahead. So if a character is not as big as they're wanting them to be, you can kind of dial it back a little bit from them. If a character is picking up steam and oh no, we should have had them be the folks of the show, you can kind of work them into more of the show. And you're not stuck with this movie that you filmed six months ago and an audience that just wants to see more of the character that's in the movie for three minutes. Yeah, which has happened in the past. I can't point to any specific character right off the top of my head, but I know it's happened in the past of Marvel movies. It's like, hey, I want to see more. Like, okay, Grandmaster. Now, Grandmaster had definite scenes, but it's Jeff Goldblum. You use Jeff Goldblum a little bit mm -hmm. more, right? So, yeah, just as an example off the top of my head, I guess. All right, moving on. We have a little, I don't know, cleanup from AC Bradley from the What If series. There was a tweet that she put out there about the Infinity Stones. Now, I know we talked about the Infinity Stones in the previous podcast. We had Mr. Paracletes come on and give a voicemail pontificating about why the Infinity Stones were acting the way they were or not. Let me read her tweet. This is AC Bradley, also known as Ashley Bradley, and she was the showrunner for What If. Her tweet reads this, quote, Happy Monday! 
Just a reminder that Ultron is using the Infinity Stones to power himself, same universe being. Also, he's legit punching across multiverses, turning them into one messy universe soup. Okay, so that's her tweet. Now, the article from Comic Book Resources that it pulled had this explanation of that tweet, so if you need to delve into it a little bit further. So the article read, Bradley's tweet essentially explains the stones power Ultron himself, and it's therefore Ultron's own power that has allowed him to wreak havoc across the multiverse, not the stones, and therefore sidesteps the issue of just where one universe's infinity stones would have any power, unquote. So it's a little confusing, but basically the stones are being used to power Ultron himself no matter which universe he's in, and that he does have a huge amount of, I was going to say infinite, but a huge amount of power himself to wreak havoc anywhere he is without the stones. So even if the stones aren't working wherever he is, Ultron is still a mega being. Cosmic being, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, that's the explanation. Chris, are you confused yet? I'm not confused because I've just written the entire thing off as plot magic, and I don't care. As in, it can be plot magic all at once. I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I don't care why they're making this work, because it does. There was a lot of things wrong, or a lot of complaints about the whole thing. I loved it. You loved it. But there's a lot of complaints about the voice work not being the same. Like, I, we wanted James Spader. Well, you're not going to get James Spader. It's not the same character. Okay. I just thought of something. What if they had gotten James Spader, but he was doing an impression of somebody else? <laughs> I don't think he does impressions. I don't know. That's a good question there. Uh, okay. We're going to move on into our penultimate news story for the episode, and it deals with Howard the Duck. Now, this is another rumor for another animated series for Disney Plus about Howard the Duck. So I couldn't point to a specific article on this because it was from an anonymous 4chan user. No, whatever you want to put credence into it, but this at least got enough traction to be discussed. I want to footstop that it is rumor. But anyway, Disney is in the early stages of development on a cartoon show starring starring Howard the Duck. It will be one of the first projects by the recently launched Marvel Studios Animation and will star Seth Green. Oh, we will see star Seth Green reprise his role as the title character. Additionally, Disney is set to officially reveal the show at their Disney Plus Day event on November 12th, and it is due to release in 2024. This should all be taken with a grain of salt since the source makes the validity of the claim questionable. Unquote. Okay, a Howard the Duck series. I gotta say, I don't care. I'm not an anti Howard the Duck person, but I've not seen anything that says, oh, I totally want to see a series on this, even with him marrying Darcy. And I am a complete Darcy fan. I mean, if Darcy's going to be with him, of course, I'm going to see Howard the Duck. But it's like, I don't know, Sex in the City, any of the guys in there? Do you remember any of the guys from Sex? If you watched it, do you remember any of the guys from Sex in the City? No. I never watched it. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I never watched either, but I don't remember any of the guys from the cast. I just remember the women from the cast. I think this is the same thing. I'm going to remember Darcy. I'm not going to remember Seth Green as Howard the Duck. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Maybe they can make it work. Maybe they can make it interesting. Maybe they can make it entertaining. What do you think, Chris? I mean, if they make it, I'll watch it. If they don't, then I'll be perfectly fine. There's a Howard the Duck trade. I don't know which one it is at the comic shop that I think has been sitting on the shelf the entire time I've been trying to go there. So, and from what I see, there's not a big Howard the Duck fandom. Prove me wrong, internet, I guess. But my only Howard the Duck experience is trying to watch the old movie. This might be a a tip of the hat to Seth Green saying, okay, you know, we know you're doing good things. Here you go. Let's see if you can make Howard the Duck work, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, if I watch this, it's going to be more because of Seth Green than Howard the Duck. And even that, Seth Green isn't the biggest person in the world, I guess. I mean, I liked him most as when he voiced 
the character in Mass Effect. So, yeah, it's not that big of a deal as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it, if they can do it in a entertaining fashion, that's really all we care about in Disney+. Plus. Did you see the date on that, 2024? It's like three years off into the future. That's plenty of time, though, to actually get it made. Maybe this is their test run to see if there's enough of a fan reaction to be worth doing. Yeah, the feeler before Disney Plus Day, and if there's people talking about it, people receptive of it and whatever, then okay, we'll green light it. But if not, they'll be like, no, oh, we didn't do anything like that. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Maybe that's why they leaked it to 4chan, because I trust 4chan less than I trust Reddit. I've never been on 4chan, so... You're not missing much at all. Well, here's a new story that I wish we didn't have to cover, but it's significant enough that we will cover it. We have covered it before, but there's been a new development per se. It's more of something coming to light again, basically. So, Chris, what do we got here? So we have Stephen S. Knight, who had been working before on the Netflix Daredevil series, has publicly gone out and said that because C.B. Sabolsky went and back in 2017 was using a pseudonym to write things for Marvel while he was being an editor that he's not going to be working with Marvel anymore. And it's not just that Sabolsky was using a pseudonym, it was that Sabolsky was using a Japanese name and there's already a bunch of people saying, okay, we need more Asian representation in comics, and here's this white guy coming in pretending to be an Asian guy. Yeah, if Lauren was here, she'd be standing up and down and jumping up and down in her chair saying, yeah, I've been talking about this for years. Yeah, man, I agree. I think the lesson here is Stephen S. Tonight, who was the showrunner for Daredevil when it first came out, right? And he had continued his relationship with Marvel and the comics division, and he's just bringing it to light again, saying, wait, 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 he's still here? But no, I'm gone. So he left. And it's also that he didn't really, from me reading the article, it's also from my understanding of the article that this wasn't really something that he was too aware of. So it also just brings up the fact that not everybody knows everything. And every time you have a story come out like this, you know, somebody's hearing it for the first time, most likely. And that's why people keep going and try to make sure that they remember, you know, this horrible person did this horrible thing. This good person did this good thing. Right. And for the record, Lauren, we didn't talk about it at the beginning of the show. Lauren actually wanted to be here tonight. She wasn't feeling healthy enough to be on the show tonight. So she would have talked about this had she been here, but she's not here. So I just want to give deference to Lauren on this whole thing because she's been talking about it for a long, long time. So is Michelle. So is Haley in the earlier days as well. So we have been covering this for a while and it's not just been me. It's been all the other agents as well. I don't know if Marvel's going to do anything about it, but they did lose Steven S. Knight, who arguably did the best season of Netflix out there for the, the Marvel series. I think season one of Daredevil is largely lauded as either the best season or one of the best seasons. And it was because of Steven S. Tonight. And he was continuing his relationship with Marvel. So he could have been brought in to do a, a future Disney Plus show or something like that. And he has cut all ties. Now, can that be reverted? Yeah. Look at James Gunn, right? It's reverse, but Marvel Disney fired James Gunn, then they brought him back, and Steven could probably come back, especially if they do something about C.B. Sabolsky. So, I don't know. We'll see. Are you done with news for the week, Chris? Yeah, I really think they're trying to save a bunch of stuff for Disney Plus Day. So, that's about what we've got. Yeah, so we'll have two weeks worth of stuff when we come back next time. And then we'll be gearing up for that big Disney Plus day and the Shang-Chi premiere on Disney Plus and then Hawkeye coming up after that as well. So if you have any feedback for us on this, on anything we've covered in the past, or maybe you want to recommend stuff for us to cover in the future, we have a voicemail at 844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871. 
We have a Discord server that is part of the Gunna Geek Network, which you can find at Gunna Geek, G-O-N-N-A-G-E-E-K dot com slash Discord. That's Gunna Geek dot com slash Discord. And our Twitter account is at Legends of Shield. We have had feedback following the What If finale. We'll be talking about that when we come back next time. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining us this week. I really appreciate it, especially since Lauren couldn't be here. You saved our listener from having a solo SP cast. As much as I would have liked a solo SP cast, I'm glad that I could be what saved your podcast. <laughs> thank you very much, Chris. And you have a superhero comic book video game podcast yourself. I do. And that podcast is called Play Comics. You can find it over at playcomics.com. Lately, it has been a lot of bonus episodes talking to creators about their cool things. Normal episodes, we're looking at video games based on comics and how well they represent that source material. But as of right now, the last three episodes were a Kickstarter that I'm really excited about talking to the creator there, talking to the writer of the Captain America story on Marvel's Infinity line of comics, which are exclusive to Marvel Unlimited, and talking to one of the artists on the pretty recently released Wonderful Women of the World anthology from DC. Sounds great. I love delving into my podcatcher when I'm on a walk with the dog, Cooper, Puppy Cooper, and listening to your stuff. All right, that's it for this week. Until next time, I'm director of the show, SP. And I'm consultant Chris. See everybody in two weeks, and we'll catch you later. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com, and you will find all our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2021.